This video is part of an audiobook series featuring The Fourth Industrial Revolution, written in 2016 by Klaus Schwab. For more audiobooks, please visit my YouTube channel or my website for downloads. 3.3.3 International Security The Fourth Industrial Revolution will have a profound impact on the nature of state relationships and international security. I devote particular attention to this issue in this section as I feel that all of the important transformations linked to the fourth industrial revolution, security is a topic not sufficiently discussed in the public domain and in sectors outside governments and the defense industry. The critical danger is that the hyperconnected world of rising inequality may lead to increasing fragmentation, segregation, and social unrest, which in turn creates the conditions for violent extremism. The fourth industrial revolution will change the character of security threats while also influencing shifts of power, which are occurring both geographically and from state to non-state actors. Faced with the rise of armed non-state actors within what is already an increasing complex geopolitical landscape, the, co the prospect of establishing a common platform for collaboration around key international security challenges becomes a critical, if more demanding, challenge. Connectivity, fragmentation, and social unrest. We live in a hyperconnected world where information, ideas, and people are traveling faster than ever before. We also live in a world of rising inequality, a phenomenon that will be exacerbated by the massive changes in the labor market that I described earlier. Widening social exclusion, the challenge of finding reliable sources of meaning in the modern world, and a disenchantment with established elites and structures, perceived or real, has motivated extremist movements and enabled them to recruit for a violent struggle against existing systems. Hyperconnectivity does not naturally come together with greater tolerance or adaptability, as seen in the reactions to the tragic human displacements that reached a historic high in 2015. However, the same hyperconnectivity also contains the potential to reach common ground based on greater acceptance and understanding of differences, which could help bring communities together rather than driving them apart. If we do not continue to move in this direction, however, the alternative is that it will lead to increasing fragmentation. Mobility and the Fourth Industrial Revolution the movement of people around the world is both a significant phenomenon and a huge driver of wealth. How will the fourth industrial revolution impact human mobility? It may be too soon to tell, but extrapolating from current trends indicates that mobility will play an ever more important role in society and economics in the future than today, for a few reasons. First, realizing life aspirations. Corresponding to a rise in awareness of events and opportunities in other countries, thanks to rising connectivity, mobility is increasingly seen as a life choice to be exercised at some point, especially by young people. While individual motivations vary enormously, the search for work, the desire to study, the need for protection, the desire to reunite family, and so on, there is a greater readiness to look for solutions over the horizon. Other reasons. Redefining individual identities. Individuals used to identify their lives most closely with a place, an ethnic group, a particular culture, or even a language. The advent of online engagement and increased exposure to ideas from other cultures means that identities are now more fungible than previously. People are now much more comfortable with carrying and managing multiple identities. Redefining family identity. Thanks to the combination of historical migration patterns and low-cost connectivity, family structures are being redefined. No longer bound by space, they often stretch across the world with constant family dialogue reinforced by digital means. Increasingly, the traditional family unit is being replaced by the transnational family network. Remapping labor markets. Worker mobility has the potential to transform domestic labor markets for better or for worse. On one hand, workers in the developing world constitute a pool of human resources at multiple skill levels that can satisfy unmet labor market needs in the developed world. Talent mobility is a driver of creativity, of industrial innovation and work efficiency. On the other hand, the injection of migrant labor into domestic markets, if not managed effectively, can produce wage distortions and social unrest in host nations, 
while depriving origin countries of valuable human capital. The digital revolution created new opportunities for communication and mobility that complemented and enhanced physical mobility. It is likely that the fourth industrial revolution will have a similar effect, as the fusion of the physical, digital, and biological worlds will further transcend time and space limitations in such a way as to encourage mobility. One of the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution will therefore be the governance of human mobility to ensure that its benefits are fully realized by aligning sovereign rights and obligations with individual rights and aspirations, reconciling national and human security, and finding ways to maintain social harmony in the midst of increasing diversity. The Changing Nature of Conflict <clears throat> The Fourth Industrial Revolution will affect the scale of conflict as well as its character. The distinctions between war and peace and who is combatant and non-combatant are becoming uncomfortably blurred. Similarly, the battlefield is increasingly both local and global. Organizations such as Daesh or ISIS operate principally in defined areas in the Middle East, but they also recruit fighters from more than 100 countries, largely through social media, while related terrorist attacks can occur anywhere on the planet. Modern conflicts are increasingly hybrid in nature, combining traditional battlefield techniques with elements that were previously mostly associated with armed non-state actors. However, with technologies fusing in increasingly unpredictable ways and with state and, non and armed non-state actors learning from each other, the potential magnitude of change is not yet widely appreciated. As this process takes place and new, deadly technologies become easier to acquire and use, it is clear that the fourth industrial revolution offers individuals increasingly diverse ways to harm others on a grand scale. Realizing this leads to a greater sense of vulnerability. It is not all bleak. Access to technology also brings with it the possibility of greater precision in warfare, cutting-edge protective wear for combat, the capacity to 3D print essential spare parts or other components right on the battlefield, and so on. Cyber warfare. Cyber warfare presents one of the most serious threats of our time. Cyberspace is becoming as much a theater of engagement as land, sea, and air were in the past. I can safely postulate that, while any future conflict between reasonably advanced actors may or may not play out in the physical world, it will most likely include a cyber dimension simply because no modern opponent would resist the temptation to disrupt, confuse, or destroy their enemy's sensors, communications, and decision-making capability. This will not only lower the threshold of war, but will also blur the distinction between war and peace, because any networks or connected devices, from military systems to civilian infrastructure such as energy sources, electricity grids, health or traffic controls, or water supplies can be hacked and attacked. The concept of the adversary is also affected as a result. Contrary to the past, you may not be certain of who is attacking you, and even whether you have been attacked at all. Defense, military, and national security strategists had focused on a limited number of traditionally hostile states, but now they must consider a near-infinite and indistinct universe of hackers, terrorists, activists, criminals, and other possible foes. Cyber warfare can take many different forms, from criminal acts and espionage to destructive attacks such as Stuxnet, that remain largely underestimated and misunderstood because they are so new and difficult to counter. Since 2008, there have been many instances of cyber attacks directed at both specific countries and companies, yet discussions about this new era of warfare are still in their infancy and the gap between those who understand the highly technical issues of cyber warfare and those who are developing cyber policy widens by the day. Whether a set of shared norms will evolve for cyber warfare, analogous to those developed for nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons, remains an open question. We lack even a taxonomy to agree on what amounts as an attack and the appropriate response, with what and by whom. Part of the equation to manage this scenario is to define what data travels across borders. This is an indication of how far there is to go on effectively controlling cross-border cyber-based transactions without inhibiting the positive outputs from a more interconnected world. Autonomous Warfare 
Autonomous warfare, including the deployment of military robots and AI-powered automated weaponry, holds out the prospect of robo-war, which will play a transformative role in future conflict. The seabed and space are also likely to become increasingly militarized as more and more actors, state and commercial, gain the ability to send up satellites and mobilized unmanned water underwater vehicles capable of disrupting fiber optic cables and satellite traffic. Criminal gangs are already using off-the-shelf off-the-shelf quadrocopter drones to spy on and attack rivals. Autonomous weapons capable of identifying targets and deciding to open fire without human intervention will become increasingly feasible, challenging the laws of war. Box F, Emerging Technologies Transforming International Security Drones, they are essentially flying robots. The U.S. currently leads, but the technology is spreading widely and becoming more affordable. Autonomous Weapons Combining drone technology with artificial intelligence, they have the potential to select and engage targets without human intervention, according to predefined criteria. The militarization of space. While more than half of all satellites are commercial, these orbiting communications devices are increasingly important for military purposes. A new generation of hypersonic glide weapons is also poised to enter this domain, increasing the probability that space will play a role in future conflicts and raising concern that current mechanisms to regulate space activities are no longer sufficient. Wearable devices. They can optimize health and performance under conditions of extreme stress or produce exoskeletons that enhance soldiers' performance, allowing a human to carry loads of up to 90 kilograms without difficulty. Additive manufacturing. Hmm. It will revolutionize supply chains by enabling replacement parts to be manufactured in the field from digitally transmitted designs and locally available materials. It could also enable the development of new kinds of warheads with greater control of particle size and detonation. Renewable energy. This enables power to be generated locally, revolutionizing supply chains and enhancing the capacity to print parts on demand in even remote locations. Nanotechnology. Nano is progressively leading to metamaterials, smart materials which possess properties that do not occur naturally. It will make weaponry better, lighter, more mobile, smarter, and more precise, and will ultimately result in systems that can self-replicate and self-assemble. Biological weapons. The history of biological warfare is nearly as old as the history of war itself, but rapid advances in biotechnology, genetics, and genomics are the harbinger of new, highly lethal weapons. Airborne designer viruses, engineered superbugs, genetically modified plagues, and so on, all of these form the basis for potential doomsday scenarios. Biochemical weapons. As with biological weapons, technological innovation is making the assembly of these weapons almost as easy as a do-it-yourself task. Drones could be employed to deliver them. And social media. While digital channels provide opportunities for spreading information and organizing action for good causes, they can also be used to spread malicious content and propaganda. As with ISIS, employed by extremist groups to recruit and mobilize followers. Young adults are particularly vulnerable, especially if they lack a stable social support network. Many of the technologies described in Box F, Emerging Technologies Transforming International Security, already exist. As an example, Samsung's SGRA-1 robots, equipped with two machine guns and a gun with rubber bullets, now man border posts in the Korean demilitarized zone. They are, for the moment, controlled by human operators, but could, once programmed, identify and engage human targets independently. Last year, the United Kingdom Ministry of Defense and BAE Systems announced the successful test of the Tyrannus stealth plane, also known as the Raptor, which can take off, fly to a, give, a given destination, and find a set target with little intervention from its operator unless required. There are many such examples. They will multiply and, in the process, raise critical questions at the intersection of geopolitics, military strategy and tactics, regulation, and ethics. 
New Frontiers in Global Security. As stressed several times in this book, we only have a limited sense of the ultimate potential of new technologies and what lies ahead. There is no, this is no less the case in the realm of international and domestic security. For each innovation we can think of, there will be positive application and a, posit- and a possible dark side. While neurotechnologies such as neuroprosthetics are already employed to solve medical problems, in the future they could be applied to military purposes. Computer systems attached to brain tissue could enable a paralyzed patient to control a robotic arm or leg. The same technology could be used to direct a bionic pilot or soldier. Brain devices designed to treat the conditions of of Alzheimer's disease could be implanted in soldiers to erase memories or create new ones. It's not, quote, it's not a question of if non-state actors will use some form of neuroscientific techniques or technologies, but a question of when and which ones they will use, end quote, from James Giordano, a neuroethicist at Georgetown University Medical Center. He says, the brain is the next battlefield. The availability and, at times, the unregulated nature of many of these innovations have a further important implication. Current trends suggest a rapid and massive democratization of the capability to inflict damage on a very large scale, something previously limited to governments or very sophisticated organizations. From 3D printed weapons to genetic engineering in home laboratories, destructive tools across a range of emerging technologies are becoming more readily available. And with the fusion of technologies, a key theme of this book, unpredictable dynamics inherently surface, challenging existing legal and ethical frameworks. Toward a more secure world. In the face of these challenges, how do we persuade people to take the security threats from emerging technologies more seriously? Even more important, can we engender cooperation between the public and private sectors on the global scale to mitigate these threats? Over the second half of the last century, the fear of nuclear warfare gradually gave way to a, the, relatively, the relative stability of mutually assured destruction, MAD, and a nuclear taboo seems to have emerged. If the logic of MAD has worked so far, it is because only a limited number of entities possessed the power to destroy each other completely, and they balanced one another out. A proliferation of potentially lethal actors, however, could undermine this equilibrium, which was why nuclear states agreed to cooperate to keep the nuclear club small, negotiating the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, the NPT, in the late 1960s. While they disagreed on most other issues, the Soviet Union and the United States understood that their best protection lay in remaining vulnerable to each other. This led to the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty, ABMT, effectively limiting the right to take defensive measures against missile-delivered nuclear weapons. When destructive capability is no longer limited to a handful of entities with broadly similar resources, tactics, and interests in preventing escalation doctrines, such as MAD, are less relevant. Driven by the changes heralded by the Fourth Industrial Revolution, could we discover some alternative equilibrium that analogously turns vulnerability into stability and security? Actors with very different perspectives and interests need to be able to find some kind of modus vivendi and and cooperate in order to avoid negative proliferation. Concerned stakeholders must cooperate to create legally binding frameworks as well as self-imposed peer-based norms, ethical standards, and mechanisms to control potentially damaging emerging technologies, preferably without impeding the capacity of research to deliver innovation and economic growth. International treaties will surely be needed, but I am concerned that regulators in this field will find themselves running behind technological advances due to their speed and multifaceted impact. Hence, conversations among educators and developers about the ethical standards that should apply to emerging technologies of the fourth industrial revolution are urgently needed to establish common ethical guidelines and embed them in society and culture. With governments and government-based structures lagging behind in the regulatory space, it may actually be up to the private sector and non-state actors to take the lead. The development of new warfare technologies is, understandably, taking place in a relatively isolated sphere. One concern I have, however, is the potential retreat of other sectors, such as gene-based medicine and research, 
into isolated, highly specialized spheres, thereby lowering our collective ability to discuss, understand, and manage both challenges and opportunities. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and visit my channel for more exciting content.